Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm going to take a look at installing Clipper. So let's go ahead and get started. Almost a year ago, I created the detailed and boring guide to installing Clipper, and that turned into one of my most popular videos. Since it was done basically 11 months ago, or almost 12 months ago now, I thought I'd revisit it to see if anything's changed. And again, just to walk through the steps and to keep the video up to date and with anything that's changed. The way I'm going to do this video is I'm going to do it in three parts. Part one is going to be installing using a Raspberry Pi image on a Raspberry Pi. And so I'll walk you through the steps of installing a single instance of Clipper. In video two, I'm going to install Clipper on my Pi via the Clipper install and update helper. And then in the third video, because it's the same for both types of installs, I'll walk you through the steps of configuring Clipper and installing it on your actual printer. With that being said, let's start taking a look at installing Clipper on a Raspberry Pi via Raspberry Pi image. So to get started, here's my Raspberry Pi 4. Now this did previously have either Marlin or Clipper on, I'm not sure which because I'd switched out, but I'm going to wipe this SD card. I use this brand SD card, and I'll put this in the video description. I had read somewhere that although they're cheap, they're one of the fastest cards you can get. And again, it was somebody had done some tests on using micro SD cards for different operations, and this brand I think it's SP, was found to be one of the fastest. And again, it was also one of the cheapest. So let's switch over to my desktop and we'll start the install process. For an initial step, you want to download and install the Raspberry Pi OS Imager. And they have installs for Mac OS, Windows, and then Ubuntu. So just select the download that's appropriate for your system and go ahead and install it. Once you install it and run for the first time, here's what it looks like. And it's a pretty easy process to get things installed. You're just gonna choose your device. And I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4. Choose my OS and I'm going to scroll down and look for other specific purpose OS. And then right here at the top is 3D printing. And the easiest thing to do I found is go ahead and install, and I personally like Mainsail OS. And so we're going to install Clipper. Mainsail OS will be the interface we use to access Clipper from our desktop or laptop computers. So this is, we're going to interact with Clipper via main sale. Now there are several other options out there and in a future video I plan on discussing the differences between the various OSs, including main sale fluid and Octopi. But for right now, we're just gonna use main sale OS and we're going to use the recommended. And then I'm going to choose my storage device. And I have a 64 gig micro SD. We're just going to click that and we're going to click next. Would you like to apply OS customized settings? Yes, we would. So we're going to hit edit settings and we're going to pre fill out the Wi Fi password and all that good stuff. And I'm just going to go through here and let me figure out which printer I want to install this on. I'm going to install Clipper on my Sidewinder X1 that's running a Big Tree Tech SKR2. And so I want to name this Sidewinder X1 local. I'm going to go ahead and add a username and a password. Next, I want to configure the wireless LAN. Now I've recently received a question from somebody wanting to know did they have to edit the text files on the SD card in order to access the Wi-Fi. The answer is if you're using the imager and you're using this methodology, you're already pre-filling it out. Ideally, you're not even going to have to go on the directory system of the, of the SD card and mess around with those text files unless you have to for other purposes. You should be able to pre-fill everything out. 
I'm going to pause the video and enter my password for my router. I want to change my wireless LAN country. In my case, I want it to be US. If you're any of my viewers from another country, again, select the country appropriate to you. If you miss this step, it will mess up your Wi-Fi. And so I'm just scrolling down through here to find the US. I probably could have typed U and made this a lot faster. I'm going to go ahead and set the locale settings. I'm in US Central, which is America, Chicago. US keyboard, and I'm going to hit save here. And I'm going to hit yes. I want to apply those settings. Because this SD card has something on it, everything on there is going to be erased. I'm going to hit yes. Now, in my case, it's asking for my password in order to write to the SD card, and that's fine. I'm entering that in, and I'm going to let this write. Now, I'm going to point out that you might notice that the application's blinking a little bit. I'm not sure what that's about. It's not the video recording. It's actually blinking on my screen a little bit. Now, I know that this application just updated recently, and I'm wondering if this is a bug. So I might go ahead and file a bug report on this to let the developers know. Now, I'm going to pause, and we'll let this run, and then we'll come back once it's done installing. As you can see, this is completed installing, so I'm going to hit Continue. I'm going to close the imager because I need to stop the blinking. So it's completed the install. Next, we're going to go back over to my desk and insert the SD card into the Pi and then boot it up. That's just a simple process. I insert the SD card, plug it in, and then I'm just going to power it up. And so this is now powering up. And I'm going to give it a couple minutes to unpack and install. And then what I'm going to do is access it via my desktop computer via the web browser. As you can see, I've opened up main sale via the address swx1.local, which is what I typed in in the Raspberry Pi imager. And as you can see, again, it's up and running. That's really good. Now we're going to make some configuration changes. And then once we make those configuration changes, we'll start working on doing the initial steps for configuration and installing Clipper actually on the 3D printer. The first step I like to do is I want to make sure everything's up to date after installing this image because sometimes some of the components are a little dated. So I'm going to, in main sale, click on machine. And as you can see, we have several updates. And I'd rather start everything off with the latest and greatest versions. So I can update these individually by hitting the update button, or I can just hit this update all components. I'm going to hit update all components. This may take a minute or two, usually pretty quick, and just let it install everything. Now based on the way I updated it, once it finishes installing everything, it's basically going to reboot Clipper main sale. So I'm just going to hit try again. And as you can see, it's finished downloading and installing everything. So I'm going to hit close. Now I'm still getting an error. And this error has to do with it doesn't have a printer.config file, which we'll fix here momentarily. And then also, if I look, everything is now up to date. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now let's start our next process. Now, in order to install Clipper on the actual printer, we're going to have to SSH into the printer. Now, this is the most complicated part of this process. Most people don't know what SSH is. What it basically is, is it's a, a methodology to allow you to run commands from the command line on your Raspberry Pi. And then those commands are interacting with the printer. And when you set everything up, you can then get the Clipper installed on the motherboard on the printer. Now, I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. First, I'm going to show how you would SSH via Mac, which I'm using. And I can simply open up my terminal, type in SSH, Wilson M, that's the username I put in, at swx1.local. I can type that command in, hit enter, and it's going to ask me for my password. Now, occasionally, It'll ask you if you've never SSH into this machine, do you want to add a fingerprint? The answer to that question is yes. Since I've already logged in just to test things, I already had that 
the fingerprint, so I, I don't have that showing on the screen. But if I type in my password, let's type it in, type in the password, I'm now at the command line on the, on the Raspberry Pi. To get out of SSH, I'm just going to type exit. Now, we'll come back and we'll follow the steps via the command line here. But let me switch over and just show you how we would do this via Windows. So I'm running a virtual copy of Windows on my machine. And what I'm going to do is in the, I'm going to open up a browser and search for PuTTY. Now I'm looking for PuTTY.org. And PuTTY is a little program that allows you to do SSH via Windows. Now there's actually a couple different ways of, of SSHing in. If you have PowerShell installed and you've configured things correctly, you probably could do it from the command line. But for most novice users, PuTTY is probably the way to go. So I'm just going to download PuTTY and then install it. In my case, I'm going to want to install, I think, the ARM version here. So we're going to try that. Hopefully that works. On a standard Intel machine, you would do the x86 version. Since I'm running this on a Mac, which is running ARM, I'll run it that way. So I'm just going to install PuTTY. And that's pretty quick. Sorry, let's go down here and type in PuTTY. Bear with me because I don't use Windows all that much. I'm just going to run PuTTY. And we have a couple things we're going to do here. Now, an SSH session is typically on port 22, so we want to leave that as is. Our host name is going to be the SWX1.local hitting open. And it's going to ask new, this is a new server we're connecting, so we're going to hit accept. We're going to log in, I'm going to add my username, and then I'm going to put in my password. And now I've connected via Windows to my Raspberry Pi. So you can see I've logged in an SS stage via PuTTY on Windows. Now, both command lines for the next steps are going to be using the same functions. So I'm a little bit more comfortable from the command line on my Mac, so I'm going to do it from there. But again, we've seen how you do it on Windows. So let me switch back over to my Mac and we'll look from there. Again, just keep in mind to get out of this, I'm just going to type exit, and that closes things down. Now I'm back at the command line. I've SSH'd into the Pi. And there's one other step I want to run here. So I'm just going to type in sudo, which is an admin command, app-get update. And what this is doing is I'm checking for updates for the operating system. I just rather run this to make sure that the operating system is up to date. I believe it is, but just on the off chance it's not. So I've run the sudo app get update, and then I'm just running sudo app get upgrade. And this will install any updates we might have for the operating system. As you can see, there actually are some updates. And as I said, I prefer when I'm starting off just to make sure that everything is totally and completely up to date. So I'm just going to hit Y for yes and hit enter. And that's going to take a couple minutes to install the updates and all that good stuff on the Pi. So we'll come back. As you can see, we've finished updating. So the final step after updating the operating system is I just run a sudo reboot to reboot the Pi, make sure everything's working. Once I hit reboot, that'll kick me out of the SSH session. And then you'll also notice the connection failed on main sale, mainly because it's restarting. So I'm going to give this a couple minutes and let the Pi reboot, and then we'll get back in and continue installing on the printer. So after a couple minutes, I'm just going to hit try again here. And as you can see, main sale comes right back up. And let's go back over to machine. Everything appears to be up to date. We're going to open, we're going to SSH back in. Again, the Windows users are going to use PuTTY. And so I've SSH back in. Now everything should be up to date. So I'm ready for the next steps. The first thing I'm going to do is just run an ls just to make sure I can see all my directories are here and they look good. That works fine. Everything's looks like I need it. 
Now I'm going to switch back over to my desk and shut the pie down. So I'm simply going to turn the pie off and I'm going to take it over to my printer and connect the printer via the USB to the connection to the motherboard on the printer. So I've moved the pie over and connected it directly to the printer. I'm ready for my next steps. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a printer.config file. I'm just creating this file for now. So there it is. And you can see it's blank. Now, to fix this, we're going to go over and type in Clipper configs. And if we look at the config GitHub for Clipper. There's all sorts of examples. We're going to scroll down here. I'm using the Big Tree Tech SKR2 there. And let's just click on that example config. With the config, what I do, I hit raw and I'm going to hit Control A or Command A, depending on what operating system I'm using, and just copy this. I'm going to go over to the printer.config and paste this in. This will get me the initial configurations for my printer. Let's hit save and restart. Now I'm still going to get a problem where it can't connect and the printer's not ready, but it's no longer a major error. So let's just take a quick look at that printer.config. We have two things. There's two different boards for the SKR2. The F407, and if I read this, the F429. Both of them, well, it actually looks like they're using the same bootloaders. That's pretty good. That'll simplify my life. But we want to make sure that we read these comments. It is imperative you read these comments. If you don't read these comments, you're going to struggle because a lot of times this will tell you. In fact, if I look here, it actually tells me that I can't flash directly from the Pi onto the printer. What it's telling me in this little paragraph is that I need to copy the firmware.bin over to the SD card, insert it into the printer, and then boot the printer. So again, just things to be aware of. So you want to read these comments to make sure you totally understand. Didn't change anything here, so I'm just going to close this. And let's switch over to the SSH and get started from there. So we're just going to go and SSH back into the Pi. And this should be the only time we need to run this. Once we generate the bin file to install on the printer, we shouldn't need to do this again. And once we've SSH back over to the Pi, we're going to type in CD Clipper. That gets us into the Clipper folder. Let's run a quick LS. We can see we're in there. And we need to run the command make menu config. And that brings up our configurator for the Clipper firmware. As you can see, it's right here on the screen. Now, I'm going to move this over, change here. I want this loaded so I can see this. I'll move this to the side here. And we're just, again, going to read through this. It doesn't say anything about the low level options. So we're just going to leave those alone for right now. The controller, we need to go to the STM32. We're going to the processor unit. In my case, I know mine's an F29. We're going to find our printer, and I'm just hitting the space bar to activate it. Bootloader, as I can see from the instructions here, it's 32 KBI. That's correct. I'll leave it as is. And then the USB interface, it doesn't say to change that. So we're going to leave that as is and let's hit you for quit that'll prompt us to save we want to yes save it so that's saved so let's go ahead to the next step since we have the configuration done we're just simply going to type make and that's going to create our bin file for the install as you can see this is going to take a couple minutes now if you look carefully this very last line in mainline interface it's created the clipper.bin file. That's exactly what we needed. Now, what we're going to need to do is download that clipper.bin file. Now, there's probably an easier way to do this. 
I'm going to show you the way I do it, which again, somebody might come and say, hey, there's a better way of doing this. If there is, please post it in the comments below. But let me show you how I do it. What I do is I use an FTP program. I use CyberDoc, which is open source and free. I'm just going to hit open connection and I want this on port 22. I want to change the protocol up here to SFTP. And I'm going to type in swx1.local. I'm going to type in my username and password and hit connect. Now in the clipper folder here, I'm going to hit that. And then I need to download the clipper.bin file I created. So that's in the out folder. And there it is right there, clipper.bin. I'm going to right click on that and click download. And that's going to download into my downloads folder. So let's switch over to there and let's grab it and put it on the printer. So I've opened up my file browser. I have an old copy of my firmware on there. I always try to keep an old copy just in case something goes horribly wrong. I'm going to go to my downloads. There's the clipper.bin. I'm going to copy that over to my SD card. So now the clipper.bin's on my SD card, and I'm going to rename that based on the instructions on the sample to firmware.bin. We now have that renamed, so it's ready to be inserted into the 3D printer. Now we're simply going to go over to the 3D printer, insert micro SD card with the firmware on it, and then turn the printer on. And this should take a minute or two for it to install. Now I've given it a minute or two. And so let's try to connect. I forgot to mention that after you flash, you probably want to reboot your Raspberry Pi just to make sure that it properly connects. So I've rebooted the Pi and let's run a refresh here. Now, as you can see, we still haven't connected to the printer, but that's okay. We probably need to make a change here in our printer.config. We look, we have a connection line right in here. The MCU, we need to make sure that this is actually correct. So let's go back over to SSH and we'll type in some commands and verify that this line right here is correct. So I've SSH back over into my I and I just want to type in the following command ls slash dev slash serial slash buy dash id slash asterisk. And let's try that with a sudo. And of course, it's not connecting, but we'll have to play around with this. And let me see if I can figure out what the problem is. We'll figure out how we need to connect. So initially, I got the error. Uh, ls cannot access slash dev slash serial slash i dash id slash asterisk. No such file or directory. It turns out that the cord I was using to connect to my printer was bad. So I've switched cords and retyped in the command. Once I switched cords, I rebooted everything, retyped in the command, and now I see this line when I type in my command, check the USB. So I'm going to copy that and go over to my printer.config, roll down, find the MCU serial connection, and paste in that directory. Once I paste it in, my new line of code and hit save and restart. And hopefully this will actually connect to my printer. As you can see, we've connected to the printer. So we are now connected and that's very good. What I'm going to do is in part two of this video, I'm going to go through the steps of doing the same thing with the Clipper install and update helper. And then part three, I'll show you how to actually do the various configs. I should be dropping part two sometime either this week or next weekend, and then doing part three soon after. So hopefully this helped you. If you have any questions or comments, or you see a different way of doing things from the way I'm doing it that's simpler, just let me know. I look forward to seeing your questions and comments. Hope you have a good day. This is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15-minute help session with me, and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. 
If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day.